All right, so Kyle and I are in New Milford, Connecticut. We came in last night. This is a beautiful area, isn't it, Kyle? It is. It is. You got the mountains in the background. It's peaceful, quiet. It's nice. It is peaceful. It is. <laughs> Not for long, but. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you mean because Jason's coming? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So uh, you got Jason, Andrew, and Bob are back in um, uh, Slingerland. Slingerlands. Boy, I can't think today. In Slingerlands, New York, and they are finishing up a project so they can get out here and help us. But really, when you're beginning with the excavation, even though this is a recreation pond, we really only need two of us, and Kyle's like a one-man machine anyway. So we're going to get this marked out, right, and yeah. then set our grade and then get excavating. But let me just show you where the positioning of this pond is going to be and one of the key elements they wanted to incorporate in this. All right, so one of the things when I came here to the property, they really like this rock. So we're gonna try and get that recreation pond as close as we can to that. Cause I don't know, Kyle, how big is that thing? Like 12, 12 least, feet maybe? At least 12, 13 feet wide. Yeah, 12 to 13 feet wide. And then it probably goes back like another seven, eight feet. So to be able to wrap an edge there, they'll be able to hang out next to that or hang out on that rock next to the recreation pond. So that means right now, Kyle has already got the tripod and laser out so we can start checking our grades. And because we're on a slope, we're gonna to have to figure out the best positioning for this 22 by 30 recreation pond. And yesterday when I got here, I was very worried about getting into the ground. And just these few short scoops, there's a monster in there, isn't there, Kyle? <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and Kyle's got a pretty big wingspan, so that'll show you exactly what it is. But you know what? Some of these rocks will be able to be used, um, especially underneath the water areas, and to retain back over in here where we're going to have to. Um, because there's going to be a patio on one side. We're going to have our wetland and waterfall on the upper side. So really, we got a lot of work to do, and there's only two of us. Our materials are supposed to show up too today, Kyle, so that'll take us a little time to unload. It's gonna be good though. <laughs> it will be. Once they're here, we can get started. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's get excavating. Let's do it. So it's amazing what you can find when you're traveling out of town. But we found this person that sells all this rock right here local to the job within 15 minutes, and he's just pulling it all out of the woods. It's pretty cool, and there's a lot of nice stuff in here that's gonna allow us to build some cool waterfalls, the pond, and everything else. What I like about a lot of this is it's weathered. I mean, check out that one right there with all that lichen and stuff on it. It's really nice, and uh, that's really gonna look cool in a waterfall. Well, it's day two and Kyle is here somewhere. I think he's over there, if you can see him. And uh, day two, but Kyle says it's round two because we hit so much rock yesterday, we didn't finish digging, which normally a 20 by 30 pond, we'll dig in one day, we'll have it pretty well set, uh, underlayment and liner in. But I think this is more of a boxing match with this ground, so uh, Kyle's absolutely right. It's round two. I'm gonna show you the hole where we ended up yesterday and show you all the rock that we had taken out of here. The one good thing is we have the whole deep end done and it's six foot deep. Originally we were only gonna do like four feet and we thought we'd try to squeak out a couple more feet for the owner because of this huge rock right here. And uh, he agreed to go the extra depth so that's what exactly what we're gonna do. But look at the size of the rocks that we took out of this hole yesterday. All of this stuff, there's a whole bunch of rock buried underneath there. That one over there is huge and look at all this stuff. There is like a, I don't know if the glacial till or whatever, but you know, some of the rocks are able to come out. See how some of these are sideways. So we found a local guy that not only has beautiful rock, but he also has um, sand available that we're going to need in order to pad all this stuff. So normally our excavation is much neater than this, but we really don't have a choice with all the rock. So it's over dug down here. We're gonna pad the whole thing with sand and protect everything for our liner. And uh, this, Brand new machine of ours got a workout yesterday. It needs some grease this morning, so we're gonna have to get it greased, get it running, and then start digging all over again today.
Well, it's day three, and finally last night, just before we left, we got the liner in. So we're really good to go today. We had to go pick some rock out this morning because the first load we got was kind of small, and uh, we had to go over and show the guy exactly what we were looking for, even though we did that once. But that's the way it goes. We don't really know each other, so they don't know what we want. And uh, we just went and got that straightened out, so there's a load coming to us. But, you know, the logistics of this job, <laughs> well, let's just say we have this bank to work with. Let me show you. So this bank is just wicked steep, so uh, when that load came yesterday, all I did was set up in the middle of the hill, then I slung the rock to here. Now I'm gonna grab it and get it closer for us to uh, sling down in the hole. Last night we had some rain, which it was super dry here, and Jason showed up yesterday afternoon. <sighs> I know you were working out in Slingerlands, but you're here with us now to finish the week. And I'm thinking between the three of us, as long as a rock shows up, we'll be close to having this rock by Friday afternoon. Agreed. So does that mean we got a rock out? We got a rock out. Where's your air guitar? Oh, right here. I thought so. <laughs> I'm glad you're better at setting rock. <laughs> Right, Jay it's day six and uh, last week I think we got a lot done it seemed like we got a lot done yeah I think we got a lot accomplished with three people we sure did especially seeing as it almost took two days to dig <laughs> and get the liner in which we usually do in one day yeah so we have a pretty tall order for this week because we are gonna try to have this running by Friday try we're gonna do it, Al. One yeah, way or another, by hook or by crook, we're I getting it. We always, uh, I know I say try, but we always push hard. You know, the only thing is, is that we gotta worry about the access. And I'm gonna walk through everybody with that right now. And you know, there's a lot of challenges with this build because of the elevation. I mean, elevation is always, we love elevation to build with, but it actually creates um, a lot more challenges than people would think. And uh, let's do a walk through with that right now. And, uh, See what you think. So a lot of these rocks that we got were just huge. And for that size machine, like we have talked about all through this video, it is a challenge. I mean, you know, every machine has its lifting capacity, but this 057 has totally impressed me. I've always had Kubota stuff, but this machine is super strong. Kind of sounds like a commercial for Kubota, but we're getting no kickback. So I'm just explaining what we use and how happy we are with it. I mean, some of these rocks down on the bottom, you know, we had to set blind. I had to set the machine up over there just because of the train I mean over here that slope is so drastic that realistically you put an oversized rock on the end of that machine facing downhill it's kind of a recipe for disaster so what we had to do is keep working in the areas where we could start setting rocks so we got all the deep end done and a lot of this stuff is to grade we have all these rocks to grade that stuff is to grade all over here is to grade and what's weird is when you look from here on over to here you would think that doesn't look like it's level but the way the ground is 
And that's one of the challenges is the way the grade changes. I mean, look here, this is all grade and look how high that bank is. We got another four feet over there, which is awesome for a waterfall, but it creates challenges because not only is it hard to get those big heavy rocks down the bank without losing them, because not only does the grade go like this, but it also tips like this. It doesn't look like it probably in the camera, but it is, and it is challenging to get those rocks down. So what we're gonna um, work on today is finishing up these areas and i'll get back to the grade change in a minute because i want to explain that but we're going to get back to these areas we got to button this up button this up this is going to be our skim cove entrance in there and then we got only a couple of rocks like a couple here and a couple over here in order to get in for that grade to get to that grade when you come to a project like this and you have such a drastic change in grade we have to determine what the grade is one of the things that set this on this project was there's this huge 14 foot rock here that you saw in the beginning and the the owners really wanted us to get as close to that as possible. The other challenge with that is, obviously we're on a mountain, so there's ledge rock under there. So we got as close as we could. We actually had to start out on the bottom and then build and put sand behind it and work our way up to get to that point. So when you're shooting your grade, it's like, all right, what makes sense? Here, nothing really does because it's so steep. So what we're gonna have to do later on today or first thing in the morning is cut that grade back. There's gonna be a patio over here eventually on that side of the pond which obviously can't be on a hillside so we are going to have to cut that grade the one thing about that is we need that soil because we need to come all the way up to here with soil so we're going to use every last bit of that stuff that we carve out the problem with carving it out too soon is we need to get all the rocks and gravel for the rest of the pond down the hill plus we're going to want to stage a few more extra rocks and stuff because we have to build a stream and wetland on that bank so strategically we have to think about this all the time how we're going to do things all right one of the ways that we actually figure out all the grades and grade changes is we use a laser level which many of you do maybe somebody who's a diy they really don't have one of these but you can rent them at a lot of the um, home improvement stores which is key in when you're setting a grade especially on an elevation like this because people don't realize how much thinking it takes to actually get these grades all right so everything sits flat and make it comfortable to use this um, recreation pond so when we first came here like I said we set it off that big rock and then we had to level the whole area first so what we did is we leveled it then marked out the pond and started digging it to our depths and it's crazy because it really is so deceiving when you're looking at things from one side of the pond to the other because you have all these different grade changes around you not only is one coming towards you one's going away from you one's coming back the other way so it's super deceiving so you cannot rely on eye alone you definitely need to have a laser level